Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the Camera Act 6. So people who follow the previous version know that the Camera Act is a device used to take uh, to trigger your camera based on a bunch of different inputs into the real world. So you plug in sensors to the Camera Act and it takes photos and it's designed to have really low latency so it works great for super high speed photos like you know photographing a bullet smashing into an object photographing a balloon popping, photographing water droplets splashing. So going from version 5 to this new version 6, um, it's pretty much a complete uh, rework and it's not finished now. I'm, I'm hoping to get people's input uh, on this version before I launch it, which will hopefully be on Kickstarter um, sometime in 2018. I'm, I'm shooting for the earlier part of 2018, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, this case is just a temporary thing. It's uh, a 3D printed case. Uh, I expect I'll be using an injection molded case uh, for the final version, which will look a little nicer, but I just wanted something to put it in. Uh, and it's way more powerful than the previous versions of the camera acts. I'm really targeting a, a high end uh, triggering, you know, high-end photographers, professionals, uh, prosumers, or somebody who just wants to have a lot of control over the, the sorts of things they're doing with a, a camera trigger. So uh, this version has, um, we had sensor ports on the previous version. I'm now calling them module ports because they don't just connect to sensors like light sensors or sound sensors, which will all be there, but it can also control things like um, uh, valves, which you'll want to do for uh, droplet photography. So calling these module ports, and now instead of two of them, there's four of them. And instead of using 3.5 millimeter jacks, I'm using, um, they're called RJ45 jacks, but it's basically like an ethernet cable. And uh, the reason I switched to these ports is these have eight wires instead of three wires. So you can plug in much more powerful uh, sensors or modules into these ports. Uh, and then one of the other things I got feedback from, it's sort of hard to see on this camera, but uh, there's um, eight camera or flash ports. So now instead of just having two ports, for cameras or flashes, you can plug in, you know, four cameras and four flashes or seven flashes and one camera, you know, whatever combination you want to. Uh, another thing you've noticed already, I'm sure, if you've uh, been following previous versions of the camera acts, is that uh, this one has no screen or buttons, and that's because um, it's designed to work with uh, a cell phone or a tablet or a laptop. Uh, anything that can connect to uh, a Wi-Fi network will, will be able to connect to this guy and it also has to have a browser because this thing uh, basically has a, a web server inside of it now and it will serve up web pages and you'll use those web pages to control the camera act. So I just turned it on now and there's that little orange light. And basically, it's connecting to the Wi-Fi network now. And after a, a few seconds, it's going to start blinking green. So now that means that it's ready to be connected to. And I've already got um, the IP address for it um, put into my web browser. So if I go there, now this web page is actually being served up by the camera acts. And I'm going to walk through these menus uh, in just a bit, but I should probably finish talking a little bit about the hardware. Um, so uh, it connects, you program it, or um, uh, you can connect and get data from it and stuff uh, through this uh, micro USB port. It's got a power switch right there. Um, let's see, in the back, it's got, runs off of batteries, or you can run it off of uh, the USB port as well if you want to use um, some other kind of power uh, for it. Um, so you could use like, you know, power off your computer or uh, um, what are those things called? Battery packs. You can 
get you know really big battery packs that'll recharge your phone um, and if you want to have more power than you can fit in these um, AA batteries then you could use a, a battery pack that you know powers it through the U USB port uh, so we talked about the module ports all of the camera ports oh there's this big this big port on the top this I'm calling this the aux port so that's a 50 pin port and there's 48 pins of data so um, this is I'm not probably going to be using this on the first version but if we have future expansion ideas um, this port will be sitting there and ready to be used for something that needs a lot of uh, IO so I really wanted to make this version uh, very expandable for new kinds of use cases so I put that port on there um, and I have all that IO because inside the camera axe is a much more powerful um, microcontroller um, I have documents describing all of the microcontrollers and the Wi-Fi chips um, if you're cur curious about those level of details it's probably best to read the document I'll put a link to those um, in the show notes uh, let's see okay so now let's uh, go to the web page here we go let's see is this I don't know if that's gonna work yeah that seems to be working I think now let's move it over here okay so um, this top part these are all menus and I'll definitely be doing a, a description of how these menus work in the future um, these are things that are really easy to add you can super easy to add new menus so I'll talk about the the sound menu today um, so I've got a sound module here uh, it's got you know your Ethernet jack so I'll plug this into here and now uh, you'll see that as I'm talking the the sound will change so if I'm talking right into it uh, it'll spike up and if I'm quiet it drops down like that so uh, that's basically what it is and you you set the the trigger level uh, with this slider I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with a slider here or if I'll you know switch to some other UI element but um, so like let's say I only want it to be uh, you know trigger when I set it to a really high level uh, you know really high sound so me talking seems to be in the 600 level but let, let's set it higher and if I click my tongue you see that that really spikes the volume so what I'm going to show now is if I um, put it into photo mode now it's in photo mode and now if I make a loud sound you'll see that all of these camera uh, and uh, flash um, or camera flash ports uh, LEDs are gonna light up so that's you know how easy it is to uh, set the uh, sound level threshold and start taking photos uh, let's see we'll go back to the home menu so these are all different um, modules and you know sometimes you can have multiple menus for um, a module uh, for example lightning I or for light module uh, you can either have this gen generic uh, menu which is good for setting up light triggers um, or detecting uh, you know changes in the light level uh, for like sunset or sunrise but I've also got this one that uses the same module but it's uh, specialized for lightning and again I'll talk about all of these menus in a uh, future uh, videos but I, I sort of wanted to give you guys a really high level overview so these are all the menus that correspond to different modules and different types of photography you want to take um, or types of photos you want to take and then down here are three menus I'll, I'll go into uh, so camera uh, what was that called uh, camera flash settings uh, so this menu uh, basically we've got eight different uh, camera or flash ports and you know these these are the which how you select which one you're changing and then for each camera or flash you you say whether it's a camera whether you're pre-focusing smart pre-focus which I'll talk about in future videos um, or you can set it to a flash uh, then you set up the delay 
from when a triggering event is detected uh, until you actually uh, trigger the camera or flash. And you can specify everything from microseconds to days. Um, so all of these with the colons and the dots, these are, so it's um, basically dot, or I mean day dot hour colon minute colon second. And then this is dot um, millisecond dot microsecond. So uh, that's what this is sort of showing you. But you can also go in here and sort of see and see if I add in, um, if I make it one day, uh, two hours, three minutes, uh, four seconds, five milliseconds, and six microseconds, um, I hit OK. And uh, all of those values are, are, are showed in this. So you can, after a while of looking at this, it's an easy way to see what um, things are set at. And uh, post trigger delay uh, is um, the amount of time after a triggering event happens before you go to the, the next um, trick, before you start allowing the next triggering event. Uh, sequencer, most of the time you're just going to let all of these be checked. Um, but uh, what you would do, like, and I, I guess hmm, an example of where you would use this is if you had, say, eight cameras attached. Um, you would say that, and you want to just take one photo for each camera. So this would say um, only on the first triggering event um, would you trigger camera one. And then for camera two, you'd say only on the second triggering event uh, do you want to activate camera two. And then you do the same for third, fourth. And then what would happen is um, for the first photo, just the first camera would trigger. And the second photo, the second camera would trigger. And in reality, you might want to make this more complicated. Like you might want to trigger a camera and two flashes um, on ports seven and eight or something. So um, I'll, I'll talk about this again, but it's really a lot more flexibility than you ever had with something like the, the Camera X5. Uh, in fact, it's more flexibility than anything I've seen in uh, any market. Mirror lockup, it just does a mirror lockup when you first enter the trigger event uh, if you want to reduce the, the camera shake. Uh, okay, so you can control, you know, all of those settings uh, per camera. Um, and then those things affect uh, how the triggering works in all of the menus. So I broke it out because uh, we have eight cameras and we don't want to be setting those things uh, for each of these menus. Intervalometer, um, this is actually per trigger event. So let's say you want to take, um, um, so by the default is actually zero. I was in here before, but let's say you want to um, take five photos uh, every time you have a triggering event. So uh, the way this is set up, well, first you enable it, and then you come in here and um, you'd say, let's say you want um, three seconds between each photo. So now that's going to um, have no start delay. So as soon as a triggering event is, happens, it's going to start activating your cameras. Uh, then between each uh, camera activation, there's going to be three seconds and there's going to be five camera activations. So it's going to take at least 15 seconds to take all of the photos with this setting. Um, and then that happens sort of as an outer loop to the camera settings we just set. So you can still have all of these camera and flash uh, settings while uh, having um, the intervalometer. So I think most of the time you're probably not going to enable the intervalometer, but it's there. If you want to take three or four photos, Every time you see a trigger, that might be more for like wildlife or something. Uh, the flexibility is there. And uh, advanced menus is not done yet, but right now you just can um, set some defaults. Uh, and there's an option to start up directly into uh, one of the menus. And that's in case you're not going to have a Wi-Fi network uh, nearby and you just want the, the camera acts every time it gets power to go directly into a menu with the previous settings you had used. Uh, so I think that covers the high level 
what all the software does. I'll, I'll definitely be going into more detail in the future on different menus and taking photos with it. But, uh, you know, things are basically working. I have a lot of bugs to fix and uh, little th corners to round out. So it's going to be um, a few more months before I'm um, ready to put out a Kickstarter there. But I sort of wanted to start showing people and, and start getting some feedback uh, early on uh, the Camera X6. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Uh, one thing I want to show people, and I'll put a link to this in the uh, forums, but uh, I just... Uh, or I'll put a link to this in the show notes, but I just started these uh, forum pages and uh, basically it, it uses a Google group and I'm hoping uh, people can put their feedback uh, on these forums and, and we can start discussing uh, things there because uh, that'll be a, a spot that I'll, I'll check frequently and you can definitely um, ask me questions, uh, make requests for future videos or um, documentation to ask me how things work. I've already got um, one uh, thing set up here uh, which sort of describes an overview. Uh, I thought I had a post with a bunch of documentation. Oh, yeah, documents can be found here. So there's a link to these documents. Um, and uh, this, uh, let's see. The design guide is probably uh, the most up-to-date, most interesting. So this has um, tons of technical detail about uh, the main processor, the Wi-Fi chip, sort of the philosophy, um, how much more powerful the, the camera axe is. Uh, it has all of the <laughs> more details than anybody cares about, but all of the networking protocols and um, how the packets are set up. So it's pretty, uh, pretty in depth, but the first few pages are, are, you know, interesting, I think for a, a larger audience. So, uh, definitely, uh, go check out, uh, the, uh, the, the forums, which I'll, again, I'll put a link to. So hopefully you found this interest, this episode interesting and, uh, you know, definitely give me feedback on what you're looking for in a future camera acts and, uh, any requests for more information, uh, just let me know. Thanks for watching.